Hello everyone and welcome to another of my video blogs. If you have not done so already, check out my mental health care blog site and uh, I'm still slowly building up the blog but basically because I'm a carer for someone using the mental health services, I tend to dedicate my site to carers providing the support to those who are suffering mental health difficulties. One of the things I do there is event reviews and you know what, I like events and I doubt there are events that are completely a waste of time. I don't just do um, event reviews, I also write up my views on the care and relationship, campaigns or groups that I'm on, tips and hints about caring, plus links to various sites and organisations related to caring or mental health. Well, there are conferences, events, groups and forums going on around South London to do with mental health. And I've been to a few myself, especially in Croydon. But what is happening in the borough of Lewisham? What are the groups, organisations, movers and leaders doing in Lewisham to help raise awareness, ask questions, make connections and provide answers in combating mental health problems. Well on the 11th of September 2014 over at the Catford Civic Suite in Lewisham I decided to find out by attending the Lewisham Mental Health Conference. The theme of this conference was connect, collaborate and celebrate. Now the Lewisham Mental Health Conference 2014 is co-sponsored by Equinox Care and Providers Trust plus supported by the Voluntary Action Lewisham, um, which can be shortened to VAL. The Lewisham Mental Health Network aims to strengthen the connections made from their 2013 conference, highlight collaborative mental health projects from 2013 to 2014, so basically an update of what's been happening since their last conference and also to celebrate the achievements and insights of Lewisham mental health providers and service users. Now I'll go on a bit, bit more about these organisations later on in this video audio blog. But what was the outline of the conference? What was the agenda? Well first we had the registration and workshop sign up. Next was the morning welcome from the speakers, where Bill Pudicombe, CEO of Equinox Care, spoke about collaboration for prevention and recovery. Next to speak was John O'Sullivan, CEO of Quavidas Trust, and we then had Tony Nixon, the Director of Voluntary Action Lewisham, speaking on Health Watch and Voluntary Sector identifying issues in mental health provision. Then we had David Rob Robinson, OBE, who is the founder of Community Links, speaking on the ready for everything ideal. Lastly, in the morning section to speak was Dr. Pamela Martin, the joint mental health lead for Lewis from CCG and GPs. After that, we could choose one out of the four morning workshops, and I managed to try and skillfully attend three of them by just popping in and out. Of, um, few workshops. Then there was lunch and more afternoon speakers and this is where Bill introduced the speakers for that afternoon and we had Dr. Jim Sikorsky who is the Chair of Trustees at the Sydney Garden Project, Joint Mental Health Lead for Lewisham CCG which stands for Clinical Commission Groups. He also spoke on how the garden grew at Sydney Garden Projects. We then had Kirsty Giles and Tony Holmes from the SLAM, that means South London and Morsley Foundation Trust Recovery College, speaking, on, speaking about co-production, recovery and education. And then again we had a choice of four afternoon workshops, but again I managed to join around about two or three. Last to speak was John O'Sullivan and Chris Collins on service user involvement with the Lewisham Mental Health Connection. So you can tell that the conference was full of information and activities. And I do not want to go on 
too long about the conference, so I'll, I'll briefly pick up some of the main points made on that day. As we remember, um, I'm, I said I'll get back to what these organizations were, so first, what is Equinox Care? What are they all about? Well, Equinox exists to provide support, care and recovery to people who are challenged by exclusion, marginalization and a range of needs for special assistance such as mental health problems and substance misuse. Equinox Care provide care homes, street outreach, supported housing, group work and daycare. So on the morning of the conference we had Bill Puddycombs, um, who's the CEO of Equinox Care, speak on the following points. And basically what he mentioned is that having a strong online presence, more events on mental health in the borough, and moving to strengthen the profile and raise the profile of mental health. He also spoke about improving community understanding and preventing mental illness and promoting recovery. He also mentioned that person-to-person -person social networks will take time to develop, but they're worth developing. We then had um, John O'Sullivan, CEO of Quavidis. But briefly, let me describe what Quavidis is about. Now, Quavidis Trust is a specialist housing charity in South East London. And they work with people who experienced or are currently living with severe mental ill health. Now, they believe that every individual should have a safe and caring environment to call home. This is particularly important for people with a history of mental ill health because housing is one of the wider determinants of mental well-being. They provide supported housing, supported living, community flats and residential care. I'm sure they provide a bit more. Now, if I just try and pick up on some of John's main points made at the conference, John was worried about how the pot of money is now less, but the needs ha will have to be greater in sharing resources. Uh, and this is to do with a lot of the organizations and services having to share limited resources in order to combat uh, mental ill health and aid recovery. Now, John spoke of how service delivery seems fragmented and uncoordinated. He told a story about what can make a special difference to one person if an effort was made in order to help them recover. He spoke also about using the strength of social media networks such as meetup.com for an online presence, advertising events and activities, more connection and positive feel to do something about, to do something about things, um, especially with good ideas. Now, going back to the site meetup.com, I'm actually now a member of the Lewisham Mental Health Connection Group. And I believe this is actually one of the ways forward. I mean, we, we have a lot of social media platforms where they can be really used to make a statement, tell a story, form connections at a faster and wider angle. So next to speak was Tony Nixon, the Director of Voluntary Action Lewisham, and VAL, hence V-A-L, will shorten that to what Voluntary Action Lewisham is. Now Voluntary Action Lewisham is an independent charitable organisation that supports the voluntary and community sector in the London Borough of Lewisham. And I have to also note that we have other Voluntary Action organisations in different parts, like in Suffolk, or Voluntary Action Suffolk, um, that exists there, um, they have Voluntary Action Hoyden, and, 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 and also the same in other boroughs. But going back to Voluntary Action Lewisham, basically what they wish to do is lead discussion and promote action that will enable sector organisations to respond to the challenges of change. VAR also wishes to improve the way sector organisations are represented and also to give them a voice. 
Now, Tony raised the question of how many here at that conference know of the health and well-being strategy in the, in the London Borough of Lewisham. And Tony spoke more of the health and well-being board who make this strategy. He spoke of the priority to improve mental health in Lewisham. Tony was worried about the issues the borough was facing, hence one in five had a mental health problem, which is very high. But he wondered why, and I wonder why as well. Now, this conference is a demonstration of how collaboration is strong in the borough of Lewisham. Foundry Action Lewisham won a contract to deliver Health Watch Lewisham and they've been busy consulting with the community to engage with the public. Next was David Robinson, OBE, who is the founder of the Community Links, and he was talking about Ready for Everything. Now, Community Links is an innovative East London charity working with 16,000 people each year. They have over 30 years' experience working in one of the most deprived, diverse and vibrant areas in the UK. Half their staff live locally and 40% are former service users or volunteers. So, so far, some of the things basically uh, Community Links have been involved in is that they run youth clubs and children's activities for almost 4,000 young people. So far they've advised almost around 10,000 people with benefits, housing or debt problems. And at that time when funding for this work was shrinking. And they've also supported, I would say, 3,950 unemployed people. Over a third found sustainable jobs and many more have gone into further training and voluntary work. Going back to the conference, David wondered why, as a society, do we not look into early action and a number of other things? Um, they need to look at how language has, has shaped ideas, which in turn should generate action. David then talked about an article about how physical illness affects the economy. He mentioned about how important community links tackle things using the idea of early action. David wanted us to know that readiness is a helpful idea. Projects need to look at need to be looked at from a systematic view, testing plans and projections, looking at the long term changes, depths of investigation and develop service for willingness and to have the important keyword collaboration which was the, one of the themes of this conference. Last to speak that morning was Dr Pamela Martin and she was talking about how the left hand needs to know what the right hand is doing. Um, she, she raised several points being how do GPs respond to mental health concerns. She actually talked about the Mental Health Commissioning bid which she is also part of and she also felt many people who could access mental health services do not know that it actually exists. She also mentioned that voluntary sectors are some are now moving into service deliveries um, and actually competing for money to provide services. And she mentioned that even now NHS trusts are also suffering with limited resources. Plus how statutory services do not seem to work so well in collaboration. The adult mental health model by SLAM the teams that are set to build up an unavoidable harm with GPs can make a difference but the left hand needs to know what the right hand is doing and with that what I mean the left hand being the GPs need to know what the right hand that being perhaps the trust um, South London and Morsley need to work in collaboration this is not going to be an easy thing so here we have it the first morning session of speakers. But after some tea and some networking, we were given a choice of four workshops which we could attend. But however, we could only really sort of choose one of them. And these workshops were well, the first one was using social media to tell stories and reach people.
and this was taught by Mark Brown, who is the editor of One in Four magazine and Social Spider, um, CIC. The other workshop was a re relaxation workshop from IAPS, that stands for Increase in Access to Psychological Therapies. And this was facilitated by Nima Omer and Natalie Mills, who are both psychological well-being practitioners. The third workshop was on the five ways to well-being, taught by Mark Drinkwater, who is the Health Inequalities and Social Care Officer of Voluntary Action Lewisham. The, sorry, the fourth workshop for the morning session was the Samaritan's Connection and this was facilitated by Alice, Deputy Director for Ongoing Training plus um, Samaritan Precious who is the Samaritan's Community Outreach Manager for the Borough of Lewisham, Greenwich and Southwark. So, okay, I went in and out of the three workshops in order to try and cover as many things in those workshops as possible the social media workshop, the following points were how social media can bring people and organizations together, how to examine and tell our story plus the structure of the story and the audience that story targets. Mark Brown also talked about how it is so important that we need to give people a chance to ask questions about our story and how social media is a powerful tool and it's also ever evolving and um, where we can bring stories to the public or hold certain bodies to account. The next workshop that I popped into was the five ways to well-being workshop and basically the five ways can help maintain positive mental health to the overall population and I've mentioned these before in the Happy Heads Festival video that I made a while back. Now these five ways were established by the New Economics Foundation in 2008 and since then councils, the NHS and charities have used them to promote better mental health. Now these five ways um, are connecting to others, being aware being active, giving to others and to keep on learning. Now in this workshop there was an explanation of these five ways and some exercises in this workshop to get people thinking on how these five ways can be incorporated into our own lives. The next and last workshop I managed to visit that morning was the Samaritan's Connection and basically we had a, a relaxed discussion on discovering what people feel are the true and false ideals or false ideas um, about the Samaritans. Having an interesting discussion on who contacts the Samaritans and why and what services the Samaritans provide. Plus we had an explanation on how useful it is to talk to others. We then had um, a lovely lunch provided by a place called The Meeting, The Meeting Place Cafe, which is situated in Catford. And I obviously stacked on quite a, um, a lot of food and met a mental health social media activist, Fiona, and she has worked on, for years um, volunteering, volunteering with um, my I also checked out some stalls, one being from the IAP stall, where I looked through some of their leaflets. We then went back to the council chamber to hear the afternoon set of speakers, and first up was to speak was Dr. Jim Skorsky, who was the chair of trustees at the Sydney Gardens, and is also the joint mental health lead for Lewis and CCG. And our Sydney Garden project. It's an award-winning charity providing gardening, nature conservation and creative opportunities for the well-being of local residents. Now, Jim gave us a visual history of the project and the themes they try and work with. It's about recovery and helping people recover.
cover, and he talked about the history of the Signal Garden project. He also talked about how the charity initially started, and how a, a bit more about how they started off with artwork and then turned to a small garden project, and eventually a bigger site. Next up to speak was Kirsty Giles and then Tony Holmes from the SLAM Recovery College. Now the Recovery College of South London and Morsley NHS Foundation Trust is supported by the Morsley Charity. Here we have workshops and courses that they run to, aim, to basically aim to provide the tools to make, to, to sort of aid people in recovery and to also help those who use the services become an expert in their own recovery or perhaps if you're a carer they can aid in their recovery and also use the recovery courses to help aid yourself now these courses are free of charge to those who use SAM services the courses are free to supporters hence for their carers, family and friends and they're also free to people who have been discharged from SAM services within the last six months. Now Kirsty spoke about the funding from the Morsley Charity and how things went on the first pilot scheme and the second pilot scheme of those courses. Each pilot had an increase of courses in seven locations across the four boroughs and that, that meant Lambeth Borough, Southwark, Croydon and Lewisham and all of the 800 courses places were, were fully booked. Now um, in autumn 2000, 2014 we um, basically have courses that are around 44 courses in nine locations over a 13 week period. Now, Tony Holmes spoke about the three principles um, after Kirsty had spoken. Tony Holmes spoke about the three principles uh, those being hope, control, and opportunity. And he spoke of how difficult it was to reach the stage of those three principles. As a service user, things were difficult, and he found himself using the services at SLAM after spiraling into problems. Tony spoke about how Twitter actually saved him via social media to communicate with others and have hope in doing something, hence one of the principles being hope. He felt some had entrusted him with so much that they actually had helped him in his recovery. And Tony used the word collaboration to help him emphasize this fact. Tony applied for a job with SLAM and felt that he was fortunate enough to get support to turn his life around. Plus his food blog, he started blogging about um, making food and his blog actually won the Observer Food Monthly Awards and that that was such a great message but he, he warned that there's still a long way to go um, in, and recovery is always possible. We actually had some good questions at the end of the afternoon speaker session. We had someone from Healthwatch Lewisham who was wondering what were the courses on the recovery college and the, the reply was that the courses were on diagnosis, treatments, understanding particular mental uh, mental health problems like psychosis, bipolar and also developing your own recovery plan. Other people at the conference were inspired by Tony Holmes' story on recovery and he's quite a good speaker. I also thanked him for his speech. Um, another good question was on those who may fall out of the course due to trying to recover while trying to access those courses and hence people sometimes relapse or perhaps are too tired to attend the course at the recovery college so we were sort of told by Kirsty that the courses are flexible enough to allow people to attend those courses. At the uh, 
Ocean Mental Health Conference 2014, we then had a set of afternoon workshops. And one of the workshops basically was the, the Head Start Lewisham, which looks at improving emotional well-being and mental health in young people. And this was facilitated by Ruth Hutt, who's the consultant in public health for Lewisham Council, plus Sam Bennett, who is the acting consultant in public health. The next workshop people could choose out of the four was the, um, the Lucian Mind Peer Support um, Workshop and this is basically looking at mindfulness for well-being. The workshop was facilitated by Smita Patel who is the Lucian Mind Peer Support Coordinator and Jackie Smith who is also a Mind Peer Support Coordinator. The third workshop to choose from was the uh, the Lambeth, Southwark and Lewisham Pathways to Employment. And this was taught by Kamal Matalib, the Lead Commissioner for Growth and Employment Skills in the London Borough of Lambeth. And we also had Rahul Rana, who is the Pathways to Employment for Lewisham Council. And the last workshop was on Mental Health Future Vision, asking what success will look like. And this was facilitated by Gary Davis, the Community Engagement Officer at Health Watch Lewisham. After those workshops, um, we had our last speaker, Chris Collins, who works for Quavadis Trust, and there's also a SLAM governor from the service user constituency. He spoke about the inclusion and empowerment service. Here, Chris spoke about the differences between the negative reactive language and proactive language making a difference on mental health. Chris talked more about the care model and how it can be incorporated into people's lives. Chris explained the processes from reactive to proactive language and its importance in, in the services. Now I think I've gone on a fair bit and basically want to try and wrap up this audio video blog. But I think one of the main questions is what did I think myself of this conference. Well, as a carer of someone using the services, this conference gave me some confidence that there are groups and organizations and uh, organizations out there in Lewisham who are serious in tackling the mental health issues the borough is facing. I was delighted to see quite a few faces that I recognized at the conference and some new ones. You know, it's always good to make new networks, new contacts. The conference was fairly well advertised because we had quite a good Plus, I also went to the first conference back in 2013 and I felt this one had kept my interest a lot more. There's a lot more to do. However, I would have liked to see more inclusion on family and carers since we know that the services can only go so far to support those who are unwell. And guess who has to pick up the rest? Well, it's going to be the families and carers, so we must not forget them. And as I've mentioned before, I've made myself a member of the Lewisham's Connection Meetup Group, um, the Lewisham's Mental Health Connection Meetup Group, which has most of these partners within that group. And we try and um, meet once a month in order to work out developments on mental health in the borough of Lewisham. And I also encourage other London boroughs organisations to use social media to strengthen their networks and build stronger communities in aiding to tackling um, the mental health and well-being situations. And thank you for watching or listening to another of my event reviews and I hope to see you again soon.